All right, so this might be a lame experiment, but here it goes. I have two identical pans here. Um, they are both completely empty right now. And I'm gonna do a water boiling experiment. And you are gonna figure out what the variable is. So here we go. All right, so I've removed the lid and I have a, a measuring cup in front of me. I'm gonna take that measuring cup and I'm gonna fill it with two cups of water and then I'm gonna put it in both pans. I'm not sure about your house, but my house has well water and we don't drink the well water here. So we have this really cool water filtration system where we have a five gallon bucket under there and we have a pump that pumps the water out for us so that we can have a, a fresh clean water. And just in case you're interested, we buy our water at the place in Mathis because it uh, is actually the best tasting water and it is freer of more chemicals. So I'm gonna fill up my cup right at the, well, it says 500 milliliters, but on the other side it says two cups. So let's use 500 milliliters. Okay, so there's my first two cups. And I'm gonna, whoops. I'm going to pour it into my first pan and then I'm going to get another two cups and I'm going to pour it into my other pan. All right, so here's the second pan. I have exactly two cups of water in this pan, two cups of water in that pan. They're the same size. They both have the same lids and I'm about to turn the oven on at the same time. So here we go. By the way, I don't know if you know, but your oven has like different size circles. So I'm gonna use the little circle. This is more for bigger pans. So on my stove, I have a little circle back here and I have a little circle up here. So I'm gonna turn both of those on at the same time so that I get the same results. But then I'm gonna do something different. Let me see, let's, whoops, wrong one. Let's put this one on high. And we're gonna put this one on high. Okay, so now I have two pots of water. They're exactly the same. They both have two cups of water in each, but now I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna add something to the water to see which one will boil faster. All right, so in my first pot over here, I'm gonna add, look, look, look what it says right here. It says one tablespoon, okay? So one tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt we like to use that because it's a little bit more healthy than the, the bleached salt. And I'm gonna let that start diluting. Um, uh, we call that dissolving. And as it's dissolving, that means all those little crystals in the water are going to now become part of the water. And wow, I'm hearing something already. There's something going on in there. Is there anything going on over here? Well, there's a little bit of bubbles going on in the bottom. But this one that I just added the salt to is making a noise and I can see big bubbles happening. So we started off with two pans. They're both the same size. They both have two cups of water in them, but I added one tablespoon of salt to this one. And I'm noticing that this one is starting to boil a little faster than this one. You can see this, the bubbles on the bottom, but this one, you can actually hear it starting up. I can see the smoke coming up. It's not smoke, by the way, it's steam. And we're gonna see, it's actually happening a lot faster than I thought it would, but I see the bubbles coming up to the surface. Well, it's been a few minutes and now it's really boiling down. We got only about maybe half an inch of water left in our pot. So I'm gonna keep watching it and when it gets down really, really low, I'll, I'll get the video started again. All right, we're getting even closer to the bottom. These gigantic bubbles are forming, which is super cool. Can you see the big bubbles? Look at that. And I'm guessing that's because I have more salt now than I have water in my pan. So that's really kind of cool. Oh, we're getting super close now. Now my water is starting to look pink again because I put a number of pink Himalayan salt. 
so we're getting down to the very, very bottom. I'm gonna have to pull this off so it doesn't burn. And let's see what we got going on at the bottom of the pan. Oh. There are some salt crystals forming back up again. I see some salt crystals on the side of the pan. All of that is the salt that did not leave the pan. So what that tells me is, when water is evaporating from the ocean, the salt stays there. So that whenever it rains back down again, it's gonna rain someplace without salt. That means every time it rains, you're getting fresh water again from the sky, every single time. Now there are occasions when you have uh, air pollution and things like that up in the sky that the rain pushes it down out of the sky and back to the ground again. That can be kind of dangerous and that's one of the things we don't like about pollution that much. But this is really cool. So I'm, I'm wondering, wow, look at that. I'm wondering at this point if I could scoop that back up, put it back in the salt shaker, and then my husband will never know that I did this. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so here is a spoon. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Seriously, y'all, now that is cool. So now I'm back down to the original salt that I put in. It still has a little bit of moisture to it. So honestly, I wouldn't put this back in the salt shaker yet. Shh, don't tell him. But what I can do is I can just let it sit here a little bit longer and evaporate without the heat on it because guess what? It's gonna evaporate whether I heat it or not. Everything evaporates. You ever noticed your dog bowl? Do you think your dog bowl really, your dog, it really drinks that much water out of the dog bowl? Mm, especially if it's outside on a sunny day. No, it's evaporating. Every kind of water is constantly evaporating. It evaporates faster, the hotter it is. So if you're thinking about the interaction between the ocean and the sun, you have evaporation occurring over the ocean. The water is being pulled up to the sun, which it forms into a cloud, making condensation. Remember, k, k, cloud, condensation. Then as it's pouring out of the sky, it's precipitation because it's pouring out of the sky. So I think we've proved again that yes, we can absolutely render our mixture of salt and water back down to just the salt. And we've actually separated it. Very, very cool. So there's my little salt crystals. And if I wait longer, it's gonna be completely dry and it'll just be like scooping up salt and putting it back in my container. So there you have it. Nope, the salt does not leave the ocean. Have a great day. Okay, so to recap everything we just learned, we learned that a variable is the thing in the experiment that changes. Uh, and then variable in this experiment was the salt in the pan uh, everything else remained the same. We also learned that evaporation can happen anywhere at any time, but it happens a lot quicker with heat. And we learned that condensation happens in the clouds and that precipitation comes out of the clouds, completing the water cycle. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. There's more coming. This was just a little, little beginning video. I hope you enjoyed it and come back again. Thanks.